grateful to God for his grace and his mercies. He's been gracious unto us. Amen. And uh, for the past weeks, we have been looking at reviving this again, oh Lord. And last week, we started treating the book. And so, those of us who have been in attendance, we believe that God has been very gracious. If you brought your Bibles, go with me to Psalm 85. Psalm 85, we're reading from verses 1 to 13. You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. You will, be, will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Verse 8. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, he said. But let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him. And his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord would indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Amen. Shall we pray? We come to you this morning to hear from you at every sitting you have message for your people. We are here. We are asking that Lord may you speak to us. We bless you. Thank you for your spirit and thank you for your presence. Jesus name. Amen. We have come to understand that the Psalm 85 verses 1 to 13 is appealing to God for a prayer. And the prayer, the appealing to God, the prayer request we are making is that God should revive us again. And we have understood that revival has to do with a renewal of mind, a spiritual awakening, and a spiritual restoration. It is not the normal programs or church projects that when we are having, so that uh, when we are having a project program, evening services, then we call it we are going for a revival. Yes, that is a meeting of God's people. But this revival that is in the Bible and the summit is crying for has to do with a spiritual restoration. Psalm 85, if you go in there, you see three kind of appeal that the Israelites were making. And the first one has to do with they remembering God's previous mercies. And we have seen that they said this one to three, they got to God and they cried. And they said, Lord, you are a good God. You are kind. Because in the previous years, you blessed the land. You bless the land. And 
you were so kind and so gracious. You deliver us from slavery. You forgave our sins. And you remove your wrath, the anger, you remove it from us. And you turn away your fierce anger. Turn all those things away. So we thank you and we bless you. We remember that you are a good God. And as a church, we are saying that let's also remember what you pick us for and the good things that you have done. One of the things as God's people we don't normally do is remembering his mercies and his grace. And most of the times we look back and we measure in the, on the minority, the negatives. But as God's people, we should not do that. And the, the second thing they did has to do with the prayer. They prayed to God for spiritual restoration and that is seen in the chapter 2 the spiritual restoration after they have come to God and said that God some years ago you did this thing so good to us unfortunately uh, a lot of discouragement we have gone through slavery we are still in captivity we don't like our state don't like our state. So please, restore us again. Restore us again, oh God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, oh Lord, and grant us your salvation. Here, yeah, they made almost about five kind of prayer requests that Lord, they prayed for eternal relief. Restore us again, O oh God. Restore us again. And revive us. They need a revival. And within the week, we understood that if there is anybody who will cry for a revival, then that should be this generation. All of us, we know and we attest to the fact that something is not right with our Christian life. And we need to plead. And this pleading should come from us individually. I don't like my state. I want to grow. Just as physically, I don't like, probably maybe I don't like my state if you are here and in your profession, in your business, all of us want to see improvement. Much the same way in our spiritual life, we want God bless us. Fortunately, many of us think that something is not right, but somebody in Ghanaian terms should fix it. Something is not right, but somebody should fix it. Something is not right in the church. Somebody should do something about it. The pastors must bring revival. Deacons must bring revival. And even in our homes, husbands should bring revival. Or the wife should bring revival. No. We all I have to make it as my responsibility. You also make it as your responsibility. And so they pleaded for a spiritual restoration. God should revive them. And the good thing was that after they pleaded, they saw. And then they said that anytime there is a revival, there will be a result. 
they will rejoice in it. They will rejoice in it. And we said that for us as God's people, many of us are in church, but we are crying, we are weeping, we are not happy, we are discouraged because we think that God has not been good to us. We pray that we all will be excited when it comes to the things of God. We will not be weeping. We will not sing the songs of weeping, the songs of lamentation, and uh, the prayer of murmuring. And so that must be seen in our lives. They pleaded for God's unfailing love and his mercy and they trusted that God, their Savior, will always be with them. And we also look at the steps to a spiritual restoration. And we said that, number one, we must admit that we need a revival. I need it. You need it. Medina Central, we need it. Assemblies of God, Ghana, we need it. And that should be our cry. And we must believe, number two, that God can revive us. And we pray, we must believe. Number three, we must recognize the source of revival. That God is the one who brings revival. It's not we, the programs that we do. When we position ourselves for it, God will do it. And the means for securing revival is prayer. Even if two people will meet and pray, Chronicles 7.14 says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and I and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will give forgive their sins, give their land. So, we have to pray. Unfortunately, many Christians don't even know how to pray. We abuse prayer. But here the scripture says that if my people who are called by my name, the name, you must be a Christian. You must be a Christian because almost all the religions, they all pray. Every religion pray. So when you are praying, you must pray as a Christian. And your prayer must be biblically grounded in scripture. Biblically grounded in scripture. And your prayer must be rational. Must be rational. And you have to speak from the mind. You must know what you are talking. But he says that some people come to me and they just start repeating words. But we as God's people, the prayer that we offer to him must be rational. And must be spiritual. That's why I say that we have to pray in the spirit. So you don't, even though it's a physical activity, it must be spiritual. And we have learned how to pray and he says that we have to humble ourselves. The humility. The humility here. So when anytime we are praying, we have to be careful and number five, we are the channel. We are the channel. It's God's people. You are the one who will go and the other day, we said that even Jesus, when he came, he used 12 people. 12. And these 12 people turned the whole world upside down. Medina Central, this morning, we are getting to almost about 400. So if all of us, and even the pastors here, if you are crying for revival, revival will come. 
But the problem is that some of us, we think that somebody else should do it. And number six, we must remove the obstacles to revival. That is anything that I'm doing that is not right. I have to. I have to. If I come to God, I must come as a Christian. I should not soil my hand. These days, some of us, we think that just communicate to God and God will do his part. So we don't need to do anything. All that we need to do is just pray. So even though we are living in sin, we are not coming in the name of Christ. Sometimes we come by ourselves, by our own strength. And again, praying in the name of Christ, ending in Jesus' name means that whatever request that we are making must agree with the scriptures. And Jesus must approve it. Jesus must approve it. I cannot pray for something that is against God's will. So that if I'm chasing somebody's husband, chasing somebody's wife, and I pray that that person should die, so that I go and marry the person. But as I've said, some people like that, they are in church, and their prayer request them is that somebody who is married to somebody, the person should die, then they will go and marry the person. That is not a good prayer. And I don't expect any member from this church to do that kind of prayer. Anytime you pray, that's why we say that your prayer must be rational. Number seven, we will have to enjoy the result of revival. And the verse is seven, it's talking about salvation is a result, peace is a result, God's glory is a result, harmony increase God's provision. They are all the results that we have to see. The last chapter is what we are looking at this week and I want to thank Pastor Dan for a good work done. He started last Friday verses 8 and 13 and this morning I will not be able to go through it because of the program that we have. But the verses Let's read it and let's see something here. Verses 8 to 13. I will listen to what God, the Lord, will say. See, after he has pleaded, after he has done these two major requests, remembering God's previous mercy, and then pleaded for a spiritual restoration, the verses 8 to 13, believing God will answer our prayer. They believe that God will answer. So the verse 8, I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people and his saints. And look at that. God's people are his saints. So if you are here this morning and you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you are a saint. Hello? Turn to your brother or sister and tell him or her that you are a saint. Tell the person you are a saint. Good. You are a saint. So your name is Saint Francis. Saint Richard. And Saint Otieku. You are a saint. You don't need to die and be canon. Canonized and then become a saint. No. And, and the, the next verse... If you observe in verse 8, I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saint, but let them not return to a certain word is there. We will not return to that. Amen. Not return to folly. No. No. Sometimes the way we do things, when you do some things, you are considered someone who is not wise.
So you look into your life and see whether what you are doing, you are a wise person. But now surely his salvation is near those who fear him. And this is where those who fear him. Many of us don't fear. We don't fear God. And that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Look at that. Those of you who like and who love kissing. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Let's come and this evening, let's, um, um, this week, let's come and, and hear how righteousness and peace kiss each, each other. And the faithfulness spring forth from the earth. A righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord would indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him prepares the way for his steps. All we are asking is that he says he will wait and hear and listen carefully and obey everything God had to say. Believing that God will answer our prayer. He believed it. And this, tomorrow we will look at it. Because one God promises peace. Number two, there's a warning for those who are backsliding. Those who want to return to the F word there. And God promises salvation he also promises righteousness. I pray that we will come, come and learn how we will be able to plead for the revival. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he grant unto you his love and his peace so that you will understand the reason why you are serving him. Amen. Shall we bow down heads? I want you to talk to him this morning. He's kind and good. He's loving. talk to him. Father, we bless your name. At every city you speak to your people. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you, Father. We give you all praise, all glory. Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, now we are moving on to the second session of uh, today's program. And uh, let me just say something before I invite someone to come forward. If you brought your Bibles with me, go with, go with me to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12 and 13. It says, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Peace, be at peace among yourself. Amen. Respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Here, the Bible says that we should respect people 
who are leading us. Honor. Another version use honor. Another version use acknowledge. Another version says remember them. And uh, there is a scripture from 1 Timothy 5 17. 1 Timothy 5 17. Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. So, what we are doing today is biblical. We want to show honor. We want to acknowledge the good work that Pastor Regina and the family did. I came around this church. I came here in June July 1996 and I came to meet her. She was jumping, 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 jumping. At that time, she was still a counselor. And from that time up to this time, she has been very committed to the things of God. She and the family. This morning, we want to thank Pastor Regina and your family, Tadaka, Adum, and the rest of the family, we thank you so much for your commitment. And uh, we appreciate. We will not be able to, to say that we want to pay you, we want to do that or that. But we want to recognize the good work that you did. God bless you so much. On behalf of the whole church, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. There are departments in this church. And Reverend Kote has been part of almost all of them as far as the women's side is concerned. So, if there are departments here that want to honor the ministry of Reverend Regina Kote, let us come and honor him from the various departments. Let's come and honor Reverend Regina Kote from the various departments. Amen. Please, if the departments are ready, kindly bring yours. Departments. Praise the Lord. We are so grateful to God and also for the life of Reverend Regina Wahima Kote. I call her Rainbow. Um, she was heading, if the senior pastor was not there, if Regent Regina was the one, I mean, telling us what exactly we are to do. And uh, we have learned so much from her leadership. And um, on behalf of the senior pastor and also all the other associate pastors, um, we are presenting a token and then the staff of this church we have a token here to say thank you for her service to us and her encouragement and her motivation and may the good lord strengthen her that great sanctuary we see growth in her ministry amen amen uh, on behalf of the sanctuary choir we say god richly bless you reverend kota Praise the Lord. <laughs> Everyone calls her mommy. So she's our mommy. We are grateful to God for her life. And some of us were very little when we, we came to this church and she was here. She has served and served That's and loaded. served. And so today... We are here to say how grateful we are to God for her life and to give a token. So it's from the Sanctuary Choir of Medina Central Assemblies of God. God bless you, Mommy. And now, from the Welfare Committee. Welfare. 
led by Pastor Michael Obin. Also for Mike, Pamucho, uh, I beg you, this is from Welfare Committee. So, uh, I'm doing that on your behalf. And on behalf of the Welfare Committee of Assembly of God Ghana, Madina Central, he said, you are a welfare woman because I know you are in charge of family issues. You are a welfare woman and continue to be a welfare woman. Your wings have covered all of us and you've protected us. God richly bless you. This is what they have for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Reverend Regina, we want to thank you so much. This is this, this is uh, from interpreters in this church. We have learned a lot from her. Um, if you want to be an interpreter, she says you must by all means be a Sunday school teacher. So if you are not a Sunday school teacher, you can't be an interpreter. And when we uh, do interpretations, she will take notes of the mistakes that we did. And then she will call you. We thank you for your uh, coaching and mentorship. And we thank you for the way you arrange us to be able to do a good work. This is a small token from all the interpreters. And then we have an envelope too. We pray that uh, you'll be blessed with this our gift because we, we have been blessed under your uh, coaching and your mentorship. God bless you. Ah, God is good. God is good. God is good. Yes. Prezo. Gagari. Gagari. The youth are alive. The work is done. We thank God so much for the life of our mother. As uh, the Sunday school said, we are now sending you away. Uh, as a ministry, you've been a mother to us. We don't forget the singles all night. Our camp meetings will run to you. Our meetings, we just have to call on you. You're always there for us. We say thank you so much. The youth ministry is able to try our hands to raise an amount of 2,000 Ghana cities from all the youth members. We say God bless you so much. And we say God continue to guide you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, um, for your information, she was a youth executive of this church. Youth, she had been an executive. Hallelujah. Amen. As for Sunday school, we can't say much. So please say something on behalf of Sunday school. Hallelujah. Shall we give a big clap of praise unto the Lord? I thank the, all, the, the Lord God Almighty for the life of my sister up there. She knows me very well. I know her very well. They came, she and the husband. You see, people say, Carl doesn't talk, Carl doesn't talk. Let me sit with you. You will see a difference. They came here in 1986. I followed in 1987. So you can see that also the Sunday school, we are all zealous for it. She has aspired and gone to be a pastor. To the glory of God, I thank God for her life. I thank her for the encouragement that she kept giving to every Sunday school worker. She became a, a superintendent. I don't know whether before her or after me, but I also became a, after her. I she was a superintendent before me. And then after me, we have Mr. Adeti here, Brad Adeti, who is also here. So you can just see that it is a family of Sunday school teachers. And we are so grateful for her life. We thank the Lord God Almighty for how far he's brought her and how far he's taking her. As you pray every day, I would like to encourage all of you that a pastor can only grow if the members and the congregation always intercede on her behalf. Every, every week, every, when you rise up every week, talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord to give her a word for us. So that any time she mounts the pulpit, the glory of the Lord will descend on the people. Sister Regina, uh, you see, forgive you. <laughs> I, I find it hard to call you Reverend Regina because our relationship is so 
Uh -huh, but Sister Regina Puahima, God richly bless you. May you find favor with God and with people. May you, the Lord enlarge you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. Reverend, we salute you. Now, at this Sunday school. So please, bless him on. So please. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm standing on behalf of the All Shares of Madina Central Assemblies of God. And um, we are telling Mommy that God richly bless you for everything you've done for us. Uh, we know you've been calling us and correcting us, but you've done so much for us. And all we can say is God richly bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh huh. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very Regina, we thank you. We thank God so much for your life. She's been with Joy Fellowship. Sometimes in her busy schedule, she will come and give us a talk Sundays after church. And we are very grateful to God for your life. We thank you. Sometimes you see her, anytime Joy is doing something, she'll be in the muffler and then be around us, encouraging us. She's been a mother, a friend and everything to us. Today, we are saying God bless you. God bless the family for all that you've done for us. Regina, when you went to Grace Ranchuary, these are the new executives for Joy Fellowship Medina Central. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for supporting us. So we present these items and we are the largest envelope in Medina Central today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. Yes. Yeah. Reverend Prayer yeah. Play. That's not the last envelope. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Reverend Regina, God bless you. This is from Anointed Class, Sunday School. Your encouragement and, and everything that you've done for the class. This is something small. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen and amen. Reverend Regina, God bless you. I know between her or between me and her, the story can never finish. But in summary, I nickname her the Power Woman. She's really a woman full of power. There's nothing she does without adding that thing or that zeal just to glorify the name of the Lord. But this morning, I'm standing on behalf of the counseling department to present the small token in check to say that may the Lord himself continue to use her till the day that the Lord himself will say that I'm satisfied with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The door and the floor is still open. Even after today's session, the floor is still open. Amen. The woman needs to say this. It is a symbolic of the saying that God will be blessed. Don't stop. Don't stop.
and the support that they need their husband, you also receive the same support from your husband. Hallelujah.
The church is saying that today your blessings you cannot count. And that we know that he who has brought you thus far will take you even further. And that your glory, the glory of the Lord, will continue to abound over there to Amen. So, on behalf of the church, the church board is saying that we have The church is saying that they appreciate all that you did and all that you are doing. And all of us have put together this table. And it is for you and the family. It is to say, it is our little to say we appreciate you and everything you did. And that we pray that God will make it bigger than we see in the day we God God bless you. You have your name. That even through this, you give and hear that for the children and the children's children. God bless you.
By the grace of God. Hallelujah. The miracle worker. The world maker. The couple of people. He has done it beyond my understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. That this song that summarizes everything I want to say. And you be a poor assembly in our top five. I'm not that song, bro. Allow me to sing it. In the morning, they were rushing me. And this time, I want to sing it. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. The resurrection and life. He is salvation for the sinful. And the rest for the weary. He's such a wonderful man. He's called us to be his friend. To come Someone nearly raped me in the next house over there. 
Yeah. 